Around 10 days ago, Chuck made a video called Metro Man vs. Omni-Man. Chuck, of course, is one of the most prominent scalers in the YouTube community, so I thought I'd give it a watch. Chuck's a very solid power scaler for the most part, but with this video, I didn't really agree on much of the scaling. I feel like it kind of wanked Omni-Man and gave him the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, he kind of downplayed Metro Man and didn't give him the same liberties. This was going to be a shorter video because of that last 20 minute video I made last week. This should come out this Friday if you're seeing it, and it's Friday. Just know that I didn't sleep, but we're going to basically be watching Chuck's video and we're going to debunk it as it goes along. So naturally, this is going to be a shorter video, so stay tuned for something bigger next week this is just a chill video but other than that let's get into the video but before that once again i gotta thank y'all all four of my videos have done tremendous and you guys have been helping me everyone who's watched the video shared the video liked the video thank you guys from the bottom of my heart you guys make the channel grow and without you i wouldn't be here oh, no, no. <laughs> come on now you guys also, shout out to Chuck because he gave me a video topic idea. I don't think he's going to see this, but if you're not subscribed to Chuck, subscribe to Chuck. He's a go. And also follow my Instagram if you want to talk to me personally. I'm very active on it. I'm very likely to respond on it, comment on one of the posts. I will see it. So finally, with all of that out of the way, we're going to be playing his video and we're going to be stopping at certain points to go over what he said. And I will obviously be disagreeing. There's already a huge stigma in the power scaling community that everyone who does it is sort of an egotistical, narcissistic individual, right? So we're not going to do this in a very mean-spirited way. We're just going to be talking about why I personally don't agree with his points. And I'll be providing evidence to, as to why I don't agree. This is no way an attack on Chuck or his character. It's just that I have a disagreement with another individual. And I'm going to talk about why I disagree. Very chill video, very calm video. And you know... Let's get into it. And his physical strength is so immense that he was able to divert a meteor the size of Texas and punch through an unstable planet with 1.25 times the gravity of Earth alongside his son and a key character in later seasons, Thetis, making him at least multi-continental right off the bat. But he can be argued to be planetary due to the fact that comparable and inferior characters are already capable of dealing with multi-continental or life-wiping levels of power and much higher. Oh, ho, brother, ho, whoa, 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 now. You got too much dip on your chip. Now, multi-continental invincible, I can rock with. I don't really have any contentions with that. There's a lot of feeds and statements and calcs that are consistent to that level of power. So multi-continental is a fair place to scale invincible. Where things start to get a little bit more dubious is when he tries to argue planetary. Two villains known as Sad and Thoth were stated as being able to turn worlds into husks and to have basically life wiped multiple other planets in their scuffles. Or for instance, with a bounty hunter called Null, who although did defeat Tech Jacket, another important character in later seasons, had some slight difficulty with him, while Viltramites were able to overpower Tech Jacket much better, and obviously Omni-Man would scale above average Viltramites. Null was powerful enough to watch on a character that was called a Planet Eater, so take that how you will. It can either be interpreted as being a life wiper or a literal planet buster. What? Word. I don't know about that. I don't know about you. Planetary Invincible is carried by broad statements, no feats. Do note though, he says arguably planetary, but at the same time he has a wank section of the video where he goes over wanks of Invincible. So he included planetary with his multi-continental stuff in an attempt to argue that Omni-Man would scale to multi-continental to planetary on a realistic scale using the canon iteration of the character, which I just disagree with. What I just refuted was basically most of the planetary scaling for Invincible, but if I was to refute the specific examples that Chuck noted to be arguably planetary feats and scaling, I would just say that life wiping isn't planetary. It's, it's a broad statement once again, and it's probably multi-continental, as that's consistent with all the feats and calcs that we have actually seen. And this character being a planet eater and scaling to another character which scales below Omni-Man, once again, Planet Eater is really broad, and I think I have a scan where he implies that he kind of consumes them in the sense that he's draining them, and they make him stronger, so it would just be another like life-draining feet hacks thing, so I don't know if that would be planetary. Alright, and that pretty much sums up my contention with this portion of the video. The rest of the Omni-Man scaling is pretty good, I think. The speed stuff is fair. He gives a durability feat of Mark Tank and a Solar Flare, which would be around multi-continental, which is consistent to where I personally scale the series. So I don't really have any more problems with this part of the video. 
And yeah, like I said, he has a wank portion, but he acknowledges it as a wanked highball, so I don't really feel the need to really mention that as in the video itself, it's mentioned to be wank or highball, so yeah. Let's get into what he says about Metro Man, which is... yikes. Well, not very strong at all. All we can infer is that he's at least superior to Titan, who was able to casually lift a part of a huge building, go ham on multiple city blocks, and fly fast enough to break the sound barrier. Alright, so Chark starts off his Metro Man segment by saying that Metro Man is not that strong, and the only definite way to scale him is by saying that he's above Titan, which is true as Titan couldn't blitz Metro Man to the same extent that Metro Man could. But I'll get into the exact specifics to scale Metro Man later, as there's a lot of supplementary material and stuff in the movie to get a gauge on his power using stuff in the movie. So I'm just gonna let him talk and then I'll you know, get into that. So in terms of speed, he is quite impressive as he was able to rethink his life and perform multiple activities in less than the span of time it took for Megamind's laser to reach him, which decimated an observatory. So, if it's firing concentrated sunlight, it can be argued to being light speed, and as such, Metro Man would be massively faster than light as well. But that is arguing that the laser does fire at the speed of light to begin with. Moving on to Metro Man's infamous speed feat from the film, I think the feat is a lot faster than Chuck makes it out to be. And the main reason for it being so fast is for two factors. The laser being a beam of light, which is obvious. I don't know why he acted as if that was a dubious thing to say. The laser moves at light speed. I, you know, I don't think I have to get into that. <laughs> but the reason for this feat being massively faster than light plus is because Metro Man blitz Megamind's perception. Megamind in the beginning of the movie is traveling in a craft that's easily faster than the speed of light as it outruns a black hole, which light cannot do, and it gets to Earth from wherever it was in seconds. Keep in mind the planets that Metro Man and Mega Man are from are not even in the solar system. So the crafts that they are in are easily traveling at massively faster than light plus speeds. This is important to note because Mega Man is actually able to look out the window and perfectly perceive Metro Man when he's moving at these speeds. This is very notable because if us humans were traveling in a craft at just light speed, it would cause a bunch of notable effects to our perception and we wouldn't be able to perceive the area around us normally. So Megamind being able to perfectly perceive Metro Man while in a craft moving at massively faster than late speeds is a very impressive speed feat and it should scale to his perception speed and reaction time, which is consistent as Megamind can actually dodge lasers. Do keep in mind that Metro Man's walking speed, <laughs> Metro Man's walking speed blitzed Mega Minds to such an extent that he could not be seen or reacted to. He was he was next to Mega Mind and Mega Mind did not see him. He appeared to be frozen. This would easily put Metro Man's speed feet into massively faster than light plus. Easily, easily, easily. I see a lot of calcs for Metro Man's speed being massively hypersonic or a percentage of the speed of light, but I don't think any of the calcs take what I just said into account, which would actually make the speed feet drastically times faster than they propose it to be. We don't know Metro Man's full potential, but we can say for sure it is anywhere near Omni-Man strength feats. Claiming so would be burden of proof. Wrong. Even if we were to assume that it is literal, that it channels the power of the sun, it still wouldn't mean much since Metro Man wasn't even hit by it to begin with. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell you, right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't care. Jerry. Uh, Chuck, but that's the thing. The laser does scale to Metro Man. I have multiple evidence for this. But for starters, everyone in the movie was totally shocked and bewildered by the fact that it actually worked. You did it, sir. I did it. He did it. I did it. He did it. You did it, sir. I did it. And there's a verbal concession in the movie by Megalite himself. For you. I mean, I meant to destroy you, but I didn't think it would really work. And look at Metro Man's face when he's dealing with Mega Mind. He's bored, not worrying about the situation. He is just, he, he's not sweating it. He's just blatantly not sweating it. Then I realized we had done this same silly charade our entire lives. The entire narrative of Mega Mind being that Mega Mind could never make anything that would even pose a threat to Metro Man to the point where he got bored and just decided that he didn't feel like doing it anymore. But if you want concrete scaling and metas and universe stuff, 
in Megamind, The Button of Doom, which is a sequel to Megamind, it's a short. One of Megamind's forgotten weapons that he never used against Metro Man. Already implying that either A, he knew that it wouldn't work and never used it, therefore he forgot about it, because Megamind wouldn't forget a weapon that had a good chance of being a Metro Man. Or B, he knew the laser wasn't gonna work and he was already making plans for the next time. But anyways, the laser actually hits this forgotten robot and the robot is broken yes but its head is still intact it just has some burn marks for even more consistency megamind attempts to fight the robot using a suit that he made to replicate metro man's powers what are you wearing my new super secret superhero super suit i decided myself to copy all of metro man's powers super boost super strength Megamind also states that it would be the perfect opportunity to test his suit, implying that he believed his suit to be more than a match for this robot. Well, I am defender of Matrocity now. This is the perfect time for me to debut my super suit. Uh, activate super strength! With said suit, he's strong enough to toss the robot and endure blows from the robot. This scaling gets even better for Metro Man, as Metro Man never tried fully against Megamind. So when Megamind says that he made a suit to copy Metro Man's powers, he has no idea of Metro Man's true powers as the Metro Man he would be trying to replicate was a holding back, not trying version of Metro Man. So logically, Metro Man would scale above this robot, which actually does a lot for Metro Man scaling as previously noted, the robot was durable enough to be left intact after taking on the Death Ray, which was powered by the full concentrated power of the sun. So taking this into account, yes, even though the laser did not make contact with Metro Man, as I've proven, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he could have, because machines that should be inferior to him have. So with the narrative of the original Mega Mind film and the sequel short, I think it would be pretty disingenuous to make the assumption that the laser would have killed Metro Man. So by scaling above the laser that was powered by the full concentrated power of the sun, where would Metro Man scale? Well, the sun releases around multi-continental amounts of energy per second, so Metro Man would scale to that level of power very casually. So just by scaling the first Mega Mind film in its sequel, we were able to get Metro Man to Omni-Man's level of power. And they would also be really relative in speed, both scaling to interstellar starships, traveling across the universe in seconds. From here, Chuck gets into Omni-Man's crossovers, and he talks about how if we were to use those crossovers, Omni-Man would stomp Metro Man no diff, which, I mean, yeah, it's a fact. He scales to a lot of higher people using crossovers. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire video. So, what did I think about it? I'll get into who I think wins this matchup in a second, but I felt the need to make this video because I felt like the way he portrayed Metro Man as this building level fodder when they're scaling that says otherwise was, you know, something I wanted to talk about. Like, he's not Homelander, bruh. He's not that weak. Yeah, but with all that out the way, who do I think wins this matchup? If we were to use the canon comics iteration of Omni-Man versus Metro Man, I think Metro Man has a clear advantage as he'd scale a multi-continental casually -er, if that's a word. And I'd imagine Metro Man to be faster than Omni-Man as Omni-Man needs to accelerate to reach those MFTL plus speeds while Metro Man was eating french fries and walking around at that speed. It seems like he can control that speed to a higher level. So I think that he'd have an advantage in the AP and speed department. But if we were to use the animated iteration of Omni-Man, I think that he has an advantage in the AP department as I have seen Calx getting that Texas-sized meteor to moon level. That would be a high end for Omni-Man, but it exists. And if you argue it, then he'd be stronger than Metro Man. But at the same time, the animated iteration of Omni-Man has yet to perform the Vertigo Super Cluster feat, the one in the comics did. He's presumably gonna do it, but I think it would be a little weird to claim that he's already massively faster than light. But assuming he is, he would probably beat Metro Man. And obviously if we use crossovers to Invincible, Omni Man would slam like no diff. But yeah, I think that this matchup is a lot closer than Chuck made it out. I felt that the title was very disingenuous. I don't think he was informed on the scaling or he just chose to ignore it. Maybe he thought it was wrong before he chose to look into it, which I mean, hey, it doesn't matter, but that's what I'm here for. If anything, I hope you guys walked away learning that this matchup is actually fairly close. So yeah, if you see anyone downplaying Metro Man to being a jobber and building level, just show them this video. But with that, if you like, like the video, share, subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. And until next time, stay big G fans. Check this out. I have eyes that can see right through legs. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. We gotta get this nigga in his props. That shit was trash, my nigga.
consistently drop the track. Get this nigga his props.